What's up everybody, Nate here. So the housing market in the United States might finally be hitting a turning point. We are starting to see some slight price reductions all throughout the country and actually inventory is on the rise once again. That is leading to a whole lot more opportunities for buyers, except for mortgage demand is still dropping like crazy in the United States. So what exactly is going on here? How is all of this affecting the housing market and what exactly is coming next? Well, today we're going to go over exactly what is happening in the housing market right now and what exactly could be coming in the future. But before I get into all of that, do me a quick favor and hit smash or destroy that thumbs up button below and ring that notification bell too. Both of those two things are completely free and they help to show me that you like this video and that you want to see even more just like it. Thank you so much for doing that. And now first I want to go over the numbers. For home buyers all throughout the United States, inventories actually jumped by around 8% when compared to this time last year. So home buyers are having a whole lot more options when choosing to buy a home. That means with more inventory on the market and more choices for a Americans, home prices are coming down slightly. Now, like I said in the beginning, this has been a complete reversal because at the start of the pandemic, we saw housing prices explode and they pretty much have done nothing but go up since about March of 2020. And even though housing prices are starting to come down a little bit, they are still extremely hot and extremely high. The median asking price of a home in May of 2022 was $447,000. And remember, that's just the asking price. That's not actually what the home ended up selling for. Buyers, because there's been such low inventory and we have rising rates and higher costs, well, they want to get into a home. They have that FOMO, fear of missing out, that they might not ever get a home if they don't buy one right now. That has led to a lot of bidding wars and Americans willing to put down an extra 5, 10, and 15% on a home. Driving up the costs even more, even though that's an artificial cost, the house isn't actually worth Worth all that much. It technically is though because that's what somebody's willing to pay for it. But in reality, the only reason somebody's willing to pay that much is because they don't want someone else to get it. Now, with the median asking price at $447,000, that is a 17% increase from a year ago and a 35% increase from May of 2020. So to purchase a home, you need about 50% more in May of 2022 than you did back in May of 2020. And what's even crazier is homes in May have sold faster than they ever have in American history. The average home was only on the market for around 31 days. That is a whole six weeks faster than when we started to track this metric back in 2016. But there has been some relief in pricing for some Americans all throughout the country. Obviously, some of your biggest and most desirable areas have seen the biggest price increases. Austin, Texas was one of the biggest housing markets in the United States, but now in June of 2022, the prices for homes in that area are steadily dropping. Austin, Texas in May of this year saw the most price reductions of any area for housing in the United States, followed by Las Vegas and Phoenix. Now, to be completely clear, we are still in a seller's market in the United States. There is not enough inventory to meet demand. In fact, inventory is still at historically low levels. But like I said before, this has meant that a lot of Americans can purchase a home a lot easier. But here is the biggest difficulty for Americans in the housing market right now. The Americans that are able to afford a home are getting those price reductions. They are the ones that are capitalizing on this inventory starting to rise. But mortgage demand in general is going down because the cost to get a home is just way too high for most Americans. And that is actually designed by the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve in March of 2020 lowered their benchmark interest rates to 0% along with thousands of dollars in stimulus for just about every American from the federal government. That meant that it was a lot easier for Americans to get a mortgage. They were going to be saving hundreds of dollars every month because interest rates were super low. I remember when I bought my first home at the start of the pandemic, interest rates were around a two and a half percent. That is historically low and now they're getting all the way back up over five 
5%. Housing prices in general are going up and so are interest rates. So Americans simply cannot afford to buy a home. That is not the case for everyone. You're still going to see major parts of the United States continue to have really high price increases for homes because some Americans can buy homes. There's going to be a lot of people that can still afford one, but that is not going to be the case forever. As the Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates, as prices continue to rise, well, more and more Americans are going to be priced out of the housing market. Obviously, even still, there's going to be people who can afford to buy homes, but that number is going to be few and far between, and housing prices are either going to have to come down so more people can enter the market, or inventory is going to have to continue to rise. I think the latter is what we're going to see. Now, more Americans have started to put their house on the market because they see this as an opportunity. A lot of Americans who didn't sell over the last two years or didn't buy a home are now starting to realize that this housing bubble, or whatever you want to call it, is starting to pop. It's kind of the same reason for why people are buying homes. They have that fear of missing out. If they don't get a home right now, they may never be able to afford one because of rising housing prices and rising interest rates. It's the same thing for sellers. They want to put their house on the market because their house is at a historic high. If they don't sell it right now, well, this bubble could pop and that could cause their house to lose value. And it's important to note who actually is putting their house on the market here because a good portion of Americans actually bought a house over the last two years, meaning they have a historically low interest rate and many of them are not going to be able to sell because they would actually pay more for a house right now. They don't want to lose that historically low interest rate, so there's not a whole lot of incentive there and there's not a lot of money saving opportunities. But people who have been living in their house for 20, 30, and 40 years who are now getting up in age or are looking to downsize or retire in general might want to sell their house right now and get a huge cash value. This might be the best time for a lot of those Americans to do that because the housing market is still red hot. Now the housing market in the future is going to be incredibly slow to get back to normal. We have a big problem right now with demand still through the roof, but inventory in the basement. Eventually that will get close to an equilibrium. I don't think you'll ever have an exact equilibrium in the housing market because there's always going to be demand for housing in the United States. I mean, that is the American dream to get a home to call your own. So as long as that is the case, as long as millennials and Gen Z and Gen X wanna buy a home, well then there's always going to be more Americans than there are homes. We are improving this by building a lot more homes in the United States, but that's been really difficult because of supply chain issues. As lumber and other materials to make homes has become expensive and hard to get, while Americans aren't buying those brand new homes means home builders aren't building as many homes either. We are kind of relying on home inventory to rise from pre-existing homes, and that will continue to happen as the market stays hot. Ultimately, that's going to lead to a lot slower of sales in the housing market because now as more people put their house on the market, buyers are going to have a lot more houses to choose from. So they're gonna take a lot more time to buy a house. Right now, you can look in your area and you might only see a handful of homes, but that can improve over the next two years. So that means that we're going to see a hot housing market pretty much throughout 2022. Like I said though, as more homes come on the market, as less people try to buy homes, well, then that's going to mean that housing prices are going to come down. They're going to come down slightly in 2022, although I don't think we're going to see an outright housing crash. The only way that we could see an outright housing crash this year or in 2023 is if we have a ton of foreclosures and delinquencies. Basically, Americans unable to afford their mortgage anymore. This is a possibility. It's low, but it's a possibility because inflation inflation is really high and the housing market is really hot. As Americans have to put up a whole lot more money for a lot of other things, well, then they're going to have a lot less money for their housing payment. Taxes and insurance are going to go up every single year for Americans too. So that means the amount that you pay for your house is going up as well. And I know what you're thinking, well, Nate, I have a 30 year fixed mortgage, so my payment shouldn't go up, but that's not exactly true. Your mortgage payment will not go up. You're going to pay the exact same amount for your mortgage every 
every single month for the lifetime of that loan. However, taxes and insurance will go up because your home is going to be valued at more every single year, so you're going to have to insure more. And as you insure more, you're going to pay more in insurance. But also, property taxes are rising too. As your home is more valuable, then you're going to have to pay a lot more taxes on it. You could see your tax bill rise by 50 to 100 to 200 dollars over the next few years, and a lot of Americans won't have that money. So they may need to sell their home, or they'll go into foreclosure, meaning we could see a whole lot more homes enter the market, basically negating the entire boom that we saw back in 2020 and 2021. This would have to happen on an absolutely massive scale, something like the housing market crash of 2007, for us to see another crash in 2022 and beyond. I don't think that's going to happen as wages continue to rise in the United States. People will have more money for a lot more things, but you never know. And the United States could enter a recession as well, which could lead to more unemployment, making Americans have a lot less money too. But those are all big what ifs. Right now, let's look at the facts. Inventory is rising just slightly. Housing prices are continuing to go up, but home buyers are exiting the market in mass. That means housing prices will continue to rise, but eventually they're going to have to level out. But this could take some time, around one to two years. So the value of your home isn't going to plummet in 2022, but it may slow down the amount of value that it increases in 2023 and beyond. Like I said, housing values have gone up between 15 and 30% over the last two years, but that might slow down to a normal rate of around 2 to 5% in 2023 and beyond, meaning the housing market is headed for a slowdown and eventually an equilibrium will be found. But this is going to take a while, so we will definitely continue to see some craziness in the housing market for the foreseeable future. But now I want to hear from you on this issue. What do you think about the housing market in 2022? Do you think we are headed for a crash or do you think that things will continue to be hot for a very long time? Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below before you go. But that is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to stay up to date with all the top business and financial news from around the country, our team puts together a free daily newsletter and you can subscribe to it by clicking the link in this corner right here. And if you want to stay up to date with me and everything else happening in the business and financial world, I'm putting out updates seven days a week over here on this channel and I've actually got another one ready for you right here. So be sure to check that out before you go. That is it for me, everybody. Be kind out there and I'll see you all in the next one.